we're going to talk about potlucks. When you go to a potluck, you always want to take your best dish. You want that dish that's going to steal the show. So today, we're going to prepare my delicious potluck spaghetti. And you know, it is my most requested summer entertainment recipe. And I'm also going to give you a few tips for hosting a successful potluck. If you like those kind of things, you're at Ebony, Ivy, and Time, and I'm Leona Dooley. Get something to drink, kick back, get comfortable, and let's get started. Today, we're going to prepare my delicious potluck spaghetti. And you know, it is one of those things that, to be honest with you, my grandkids want every time they walk in the door. So it doesn't have to be a potluck for them. They just want the spaghetti. And as luck would happen, they're coming today. So I'm going to have to put some together and I'm going to share that recipe with you. And we're going to do it right here in this kitchen. Now, let's get started and have a great time right here in the kitchen. Summer entertaining, especially a potluck, should be easy, it should be quick to do, and should be so much fun to have for your family and friends. I like to start with a clean area. I will go through and shine up that kitchen so that it looks very, very nice. Because even if we eat outside, I know that people are going to be coming in. They're going to have to probably go to the restroom. Uh, they may want to just come into the kitchen and stand. They may need to put their dishes into the refrigerator. So my kitchen needs to be spotless. We're getting ready for a little entertaining. And so I'm trying to get everything cleaned up and in place. And then I'm going to share with you how I'm going to set up the table because it's going to be very simple. And uh, I want it quick and easy to get in and quick and easy to finish up. My potlucks are always a lot of fun, and they're so easy to plan. It's so informal. I ask my guests to bring a main dish, and then they can decide whether they want to add a side dish or a dessert. Now, this time, I only ask them to bring a main dish. And so, therefore, I did the sides. They were already there. And I also did a main dish as well as I provided a dessert. Now, if they want additional desserts, I certainly won't turn those down. But everything else I took care of. And so they basically walked in with one container. Keep this in mind. You can never, ever count on the weather being exactly the way you want it to be. So in this particular case, the rain decided to come and I was so glad that I had actually set up my dining table so that everyone could sit at the dining table or if the weather held out, we could go outside. Now, you know that when you're entertaining, whether it's a formal affair or a very informal affair, like a potluck, then you know that you need to have very nice napkins to make your layout very attractive. If you can provide very nice plates that are heavy enough to hold all the food, uh, make sure that you have silverware, of course, you want cups that are easily accessible as well as they can be used inside or outside, whichever the case may be. And you also want to make sure that you have the serving ware that you need, for, not only for your dish, but for everyone else. And so what I decided to do, if you're a new homemaker, 
let, let me just say, if you are a new homemaker, then you're going to want to ask your guests to be sure to bring their own serving pieces as well as the spoons or forks that may be needed in order to serve the dish. But if you're a more seasoned homemaker, you may have all of that. So you may be able to just say, just bring the dish. I've got enough serving pieces for our affair and let it go as that. Oh, one more thing. If some of those dishes are coming in crock pots, be sure to have a strip, an electrical strip, so that you can plug in the pot pots, hot pots safely and everything will work out very well. You may want to have a theme. And if that's the case, that's fine. For instance, I had lemons and limes, lots of citrus. So I decided to make that my theme. So you're going to notice that the little centerpiece is uh, full of nice lemons and some lime slices, as well as we've got lemons that are on the napkins, both the beverage napkins, as well as the regular dinner napkins. Uh, the napkins are so pretty. You notice I have a little lemon thing going. So the napkins have lemons as well. So I'm going to place them on the counter so that they are there. I have containers for our forks and our knives. And we won't need spoons, but I may put a few in there just in case someone needs a spoon. Now, over in the drink area, which is going to be closer to the sink, I'll have our cups. I'm going to keep those here, as well as some napkins for that. I have the napkins, which are little drink napkins, which are all, all which are also uh, lemon themed. So they'll go over here by the cups, as well as the pitcher I'm going to be using. Now, of course, it doesn't have anything in there just yet, but it will. I'm going to bring this over just a little bit and put our drinks right in that area. Now, people are bringing things. So what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to put down chargers so that they'll know where their dishes are to go. Now, let's get to my most requested delicious potluck spaghetti. Now, I already know that if my grands can see the celery and all the vegetables that are going to go into the recipe, that they're going to start picking things out. So what we're going to do is that the celery, I'm going to use a couple of stalks of celery, because I do want this to be healthy as well as delicious. So I'm going to get that rinsed off. And then I'm going to very, very, very finely grate my celery. Cut the top stems off, because I don't want them to see them. That just drives me crazy when they start picking things out. And you know, sometimes adults are equally as bad. So we're gonna grate this very finely. Then we're gonna grate two carrots, because that's gonna add a nice level of flavor to our spaghetti as well. So while this spaghetti is not vegetarian, it is going to be good nonetheless. All right, now I'll take care of the two stalks of celery, and what I'm going to do is that I purposely place the celery on a clear cutting sheet. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to just uh, pick it up like this and put it right into the pan. Now, we need our carrots. And cut the 
hands off. These are organic. So I'm going to leave the jackets on them. And let's break those up. And in fact, I think this time, because I know these carrots are going to fly, I'm going to put my pan right here and we're going to break them right into the pan and make it easy. close but you don't want to have it so close that you lose a little bit of your finger so I'm going to eat that all right carrot two So I've got celery and carrots, and I have an onion. <clears throat> and I'm just going to small dice it. Carrots nice and sweet. <clears throat> to slice mine into little thin strips. Then put those all together. And then do a very small chop. And you will end up with very nicely small diced onions. And if they kind of break apart, then we just don't have to rock it and do it another way. You know, we won't be put aside. We're going to get our work done. Okay, that's one half. Move all of that over to the side. And let's get our other half of our onion. Onions ready. I'll bring the pot over. Let's put everything in it. Okay. All the celery, all the carrots, all the onions are in. We're going to uh, saute these. I'm going to add just a little bit of house seasoning in. And Just a little to get us started. Just a little sprinkle. Oh, there's my spoon. I knew it was here somewhere. And you know, this has black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. And we will add some real garlic in after this gets started. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to add any oil whatsoever. What I'm going to do is that I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water. So, I have a little jar here. I'm just going to get about a half a cup of water that I'm going to put in and I'm going to let those saute. All right, our vegetables are starting to uh, come to a simmer. Now I'm going to give all of this a good stir. I'm going to let them simmer until the onions are nice and clear. We're going to add a heaping, uh, probably teaspoon and a half, uh, of uh, minced garlic because we do like garlic and uh, so we're going to let that get started then we're going to start to add all the real goodies into this mixture now I have some things that you may not have thought about 
This is one of those recipes that you can adjust the quantity very easy. You can prepare it and uh, actually put uh, half of it into the freezer so that you'll have it later. And uh, so I like to start it off with, this is a box of the Pommy Pommé uh, chopped tomatoes. I love these and I love that they're right here, shelf stable in the box and uh, you don't have all those little cans. So um, I'm gonna get this open. And once I've done that, um, then we're gonna talk about the rest of the ingredients. Now understand, when you're preparing for potluck, you do not wanna have to take all day to get it ready. You wanna be able to put it together. Oftentimes I put this in the crock pot and uh, just let it go. And that way when I'm ready to leave for the potluck, it's ready. Or if it's at my house, then it's ready. So we're going to uh, work that out. Now let me get the minced garlic. We're gonna get that in there and then we're gonna to start to add in the more tomato tomatoey base of this spaghetti sauce. I have my teaspoon ready. We're gonna add that heaping, heaping. You know, I'm looking in here and uh, we're gonna have just enough. There's a heaping and there's not enough really in here to warrant leaving it. So guess what? We're gonna put all of that in. No need in wasting it and because it's not enough for another dish. So all of this is going in. It may take a minute, I may have to put a little water in it just to get all the garlic out. But you know, garlic wards off the vampires, so that's a good thing. Let me get some water. There we go, we got our garlic out. And I, I like the large bottles, but I also sometimes just like to have the little small bottles on hand. So, you know, that choice is yours. That's a nice thing. Now, we've got the garlic in, and I'm going to give all of this a good stir. Then I'm actually going to remove it, and we're going to work on the hamburger, the, the nice meaty portion of what we're going to prepare. Now, you know, you could actually... Uh, have half and half hamburger. Uh, some people do it three ways with hamburger, pork, and uh, some type of uh, uh, sausage or whatever. Uh, you could add veal. Um, I typically, depending upon what it is and if I have it, if I have Italian sausage, I'll add that in. If I don't, it doesn't get in. But if I just have hamburger, then that's what I use. And if I have to adjust the seasonings to kick up that Italian sausage flavor, then I can certainly do that. All right, let's 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 take all of the vegetables out. Woo, a little warm. Get my mitts. All of this in our bowl. A little steamy, but that's okay. Now, we're gonna add our hamburger. I really need to break that meat up. that simmer. All right, now's the time. It's nice and bubbly. Then we're going to start adding some additional items in. The first thing I'm going to put in is some better than bouillon Italian herb. And I'm using this especially since I didn't have uh, Italian sausage today. So I'm going to put in a good teaspoon and since this is close to the end, oh my goodness, I can't believe it, I ran out of my, my minced garlic, and now my Italian herb is out. Well, that's okay. So I'm gonna get all that mixed up in the pot, and I'm still breaking up the meat as we go. All right, the next thing I'm gonna add is gonna be some coconut aminos, coconut aminos that I'm gonna put in. And I'm gonna add 
fact, what I'm going to do is to put it into this jar that the Italian herbs was in. I'm going to put in probably about a fourth cup. Kind of rinse that spoon off a little bit. Get all the flavor off of that. And let's give it a shake. Good shake. And there we go, into the pot. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna add is my box. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the whole box, but we're certainly gonna use a good portion of our pureed uh, chopped tomatoes. I love these, I love these. And I'm gonna switch over to my spurtle because I wanna make sure that I'm touching the bottom of the pan well so that nothing sticks. Now that I have the meat all chopped up, Okay, I may certainly add more, but I don't think we're going to need any more of that. Okay, we got that in. Now, I like in my potluck spaghetti to add one can of Hunt's pasta sauce. So we're going to put all of that in. Where the pot pomme gives you more of the tomato texture, the Hunt gives you the tomato flavor with a lot of the seasons and this particular one has garlic and herb so all of that's going in let's give all of that a good stir now you know we did not put any oil in so the only oil that we're going to get is going to be what comes off of the meat now i'm going to go ahead and add our veggies back in let's get them back in give all of that a good stir Now, the next thing I'm gonna add is a jar of Classico. Classico, oh, 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 is the best, I think. Spaghetti sauce, pasta sauce, whatever you wanna call it out there. It is so delicious. Mm -mm. So, we're gonna add one entire jar. Now, you know, all Italian mamas put a little water in here, give it a little shake because we're not wasting any of that tomato flavor. Okay, I got my water in, top on, a little shake, shake. And all of that is going in. These jars are amazing. They have nice detailed measurements on, the, on each side. And once you take the label off, they are great for being able to store some of your um, things that you might have in your pantry that you want to put into a jar. So I always hold on to my um, Classico jars. Give all of this a good stir. Now I'm going to put it on low and let it simmer. Now I can certainly put it in, into, into my crock pot and let it go because this is very early in the day. In fact, it's only about 10.30. And uh, so I can let it come together um, in the crock pot. And you know, I think I'll do that. That way the kids and I can have a good time and I don't have to be so focused on the spaghetti sauce. But you know what we haven't done. We haven't given it a taste. Now see where these flavors are. That's good. That's really good. Now I think I'm gonna add just a little more of the tomatoes. I don't have but a little bit in there anyway. Because, in fact, let's just throw those in. Now, there's one thing I haven't done that I do to my potluck spaghetti. I like to add a pinch of sugar. It just takes away some of the uh, bite of the tomatoes, and it makes it awfully good. Now I'm going to put in just a little bit of sugar, just about a half a teaspoon. That's just enough to check the bite of that tomato. Because tomatoes do have a little bit of a bite. 
You could use brown sugar rather than just regular white sugar, whichever you like. You could probably use coconut sugar, uh, just whatever sugar you have. Just put a little bit, a little bit of that into your sauce. Now I'm gonna transfer all of this into the crock pot and we're gonna try to do it without making a holy mess. I'm gonna put her spoon right here in it, hopefully to cut down on some of the splatter. And we're gonna slowly and carefully add this into our crock pot. Voila. Another good stir. That's ready. Get our crock pot. fun things to do between now and dinner time and the top is on and it is ready to go. How easy is that? Sitting right over there in that crock pot is your best potluck recipe. And you know the nice thing about that is is that it's already in the crock pot. I usually take uh, plastic wrap, cling wrap, and uh, when it's time to go, if I have to go somewhere, I'll put the cling wrap over it, put some foil over it, put the top on it, and sit it either into a grocery bag or a box to travel with it, just in case it, get, it gets judged around. But the nice thing about the cling wrap is that most of the time, the pot is warm enough that it actually clings to the pot. It doesn't stick to the pot. It clings to the pot, and when you get where you're going, you can just take that off, and your pot is ready for everyone to devour your delicious spaghetti sauce. Now, what I do have to do is that I usually take a second crock that has all of the cooked pasta already in it, whatever kind of pasta you decide that you want it to have. And so I usually take uh, just regular spaghetti um, occasionally because I think it's a pretty heavy sauce. So because of that, I wouldn't want to use a linguine. And most people, everybody's not a fan of fettuccine. So spaghetti is it. So that's what we're going to uh, do. So we'll actually have two crock pots when we travel to our location. Now, remember, this particular pot is for the grandbabies when they come when they come today and it's going to be our dinner that we're going to have tonight so we're going to need we're going to have our spaghetti sauce we're going to have a salad we're going to have some delicious bread and we're going to enjoy the moment and that's what's most important about being here in the kitchen enjoying the moment so Let's do that every day that you can. I did not forget about our setup for our potluck. And I wanted you to see exactly what I did. Just a little easy breezy summer potluck. Small, small group. And uh, I've got a place for the plates. I've got my napkins out. I have the placeholders for those dishes that are yet to come. I have a nice centerpiece that's just enough. I've got a drink area for everyone to be able to get their cups and drinks and we'll have ice and the whole works. And we're going to enjoy this little potluck summer entertaining at its best.
I've shared with you my summer entertaining tips as well as my most requested and delicious potluck spaghetti recipe. What fun we have had right here in the kitchen. So I hope that you will try the recipe and I hope that you'll take a moment this summer to entertain your friends, whether it's two, four, eight, or 50. That's up to you. But you know what? We love entertaining. We love having family and friends around. So because of that, this is something that we do all summer. I hope that you'll have an absolutely wonderful summer and a safe one. And I'll see you soon right here in the kitchen of Ebony, Ivy, and Time.